breaches. Look at all this land. Oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. And let me welcome you to a new dawn and a new day. Where I have got a lot to catch you guys up on because the garden has changed, the plans have changed, and the trees that were going in the back, they have also changed. But before we get too caught up in all of the garden, there's a story that I want to tell you guys. Because nearly three months ago, we bought the house next door. Crazy to think that it was that long ago that we bought this property. But around about that time, I was talking to you guys about a very super secret project going on behind the scenes that I just couldn't talk to you guys about because I didn't want to tempt fate and for it to fall through and not happen. Three months ago, as I was signing the paperwork for the house next door and sending over the money and getting ready for the next chapter of my life, I got a message on Facebook at 11.30 at night off a family friend who basically sent me what could only be described as the ultimate dream. Now I say the ultimate dream and I'm sure people are gonna be saying oh Tom you've got it the house next door you're working on that that is that is surely what you want to be doing and the answer is it's a great project I'm so stoked to be like on this next chapter and having something to focus on and put my energy into but it's not the ultimate dream. If you've watched my vlogs over the years you know there's like one thing I've wanted and that is land. Now I don't just want any land because if I wanted any land I could have gone and bought 7 billion acres in Scotland for like 20p but it would have taken 7 hours to drive there to go and have fun on and it would literally be in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. So I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched and for like the past 8 years I've been doing nothing but looking for the ultimate land for me to be able to just jump in my Defender, drive off to the location, have a lock up where I've got like ATVs, dirt bikes, the whole lot, everything I could ever possibly think of wanting to have fun with, I've got at that location to be able to do it, film it and share with your guys' faces. But then 2021 rolled around and I said to myself, you know what, there is no way, shape or form that this land idea is happening. So time to bring forward my 10 year plan, which is getting into property management, buying houses, doing them up and renting them, creating a passive income and having my money make me money. But that's just boring. Anybody can do that. That's why everybody does it. I'm in the stage of my life where I want to have fun. If I want to do a backflip off a motorbike into a pit of hay, that's what I want to do. I want to have fun. And that's why, luckily, like, as the world's aligned, the house next door became available. And if you think about it, it is quite possibly the perfect property. It's right next to me. There's no traveling two hours to get to it. I can walk out my door, do a vlog, document us knocking it down, building a bunker in a basement with zip wires and whatever the hell else. It's perfect. It's, you know, a property that's going to be going up in value. We'll be adding value to this house here and not only next door. Like, it's great. It ticks so many boxes. But it's not quite the land. And that's why when I said I got the text message at 11.30 at night, it truly led me to what could have been the opportunity of a lifetime. And that link sent me to this farm right here. Okay, so where do we even begin? I guess I should just say, look at it. Just look at that. The, the, the potential this land had for me was absolutely astronomical. If you're looking at this going, oh, it's just this small farm here, Tom. That's, you know, a pretty small plot of land or whatever. Well, actually, that's a massive amount of land, just the farm itself. But what was for sale was everything that your eye could see up until that river. This is how much land there was actually for sale. 36 acres of just dreamland. This property, this land was not 100 miles away. It wasn't 10 miles away. This was just over a mile away from my house. I could literally roll there on a bicycle if I wanted to. I'm not even kidding you. I actually physically could. We rang up immediately to try and get a booking for it, saying, can we come and have a look around the land? And they said to us, sorry, we have had an unbelievable amount of requests to come and look at it. Sorry, not going to be happening. I was gutted. I was like, no, this is it. This is it. The perfect land, like it's on my doorstep. I can get to it. There's so much potential there. There's stables with like 55 like paying customers out of it. So it's a fully fledged business that's making money already. It's a no brainer. It's just, it was so picture perfect, but we couldn't get a view into it. So I rang a family friend who was like, yeah, that is an absolutely incredible spot to, you know, to, to buy. The land is amazing. Great location. This is your dream land. And I said, yeah, they're not, they're not letting us get a view in. So we said, right, come on. We went down to go and check out the land. We pulled up to like this stables because there was, you know, a working business running out of it. And we asked to see the person who owned it. Lo and behold, the guy that I'm with walks into the office of this stables and bumps into someone that he knows. 
shout out to Pete, absolutely, Peter, sorry, absolutely lovely fella, lovely, lovely fella, pops his head out and he's like, oh, how you doing, mate? These guys are like play fighting, hugging, I'm like, you are kidding me, we couldn't even get our foot in the door with the estate agents to get a view of this property, and the guy who runs the farm and who's run it for like the last 20, 30 years knows my friend, and we just cut the bullshit, we go, he wants to buy the land, he's a cash buyer, he can close on it now, like, out what we say him, and he goes, right, well, I can't deal with it. The lady that's actually selling the land, who's owned the farm for like however long she's owned it, I'll tell her that you're interested. And he did us the most amazing job ever. He got us a direct viewing of the property to get a full tour around it, all the facilities, all the way around the land. We went inside every single stable. I walked around the edge of all the Miranda of the river. It was just beautiful. I even followed the trail on the opposite side on a previous day just to look at it to be like, this is a dream come true. And we spoke to the woman and we said, right, What's the situation? Can I put in a cash buy offer right now and buy it? And the woman was absolutely lovely. She really was and just said, listen, I would have sold this to you instantly if you were like a day or two sooner. I was like, don't say this to me. <laughs> Basically, she had given the offer to family friends who said they needed to get the funds available and that they're hoping to find out an answer within like two weeks. So for two weeks, I'm like biting my nails, biting my nails, thinking like, is this going to happen? Am I going to get this dream land? Just look at it. It's magical. And it's now been probably a good fair few months. Well, it's been three months actually since. And we last left it off as, if you don't hear from us, you probably won't get it. And I'm gutted because this is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. The potential that you could work the land into would be amazing. Like I was thinking like, oh, we could upgrade the stables because like there's some like older stables based there, like older, like newer modern stables. And I was like, oh my God, I could be getting around the land, like, you know, on a horse. Don't need a Land Rover Defender or anything like that. I could be trotting around on a horse and a big stallion or something like that. I'd be like, Tommy Bloody Shelby rolling into this place. Like, it would have been amazing. But alas, we were literally a little too late to the party. Uh, the woman was so nice. I so appreciate her, like, even letting us go and look at the land again. Shout out to Peter, uh, to letting us, you know, get our foot in the door with that opportunity. And I am still holding on to a small sliver of hope that, in no disrespectful way, that, like, you know, the other party doesn't get the funds together and I can buy the land. Because if I had this, just think about the, like, the opportunities, the potential. Like, I'd host events here and invite you guys down for, like, community, like, get-togethers or whatever. It'd be incredible. I could do like, I could get horse riding lessons there. It'd be, it'd be amazing. So I know this has been a long winded way of saying, oh, here's a farm I didn't buy. I know, but I just had to share it with you guys because there's still a slither of hope that this could potentially happen. But anyway, there's a vlog to watch. So there was my story time to share with you guys. I'm sorry it was long winded. If you guys hate this sort of thing, I'm sorry. If you do enjoy me like keeping you guys involved in like the secret behind the scenes of my life, then make sure you leave a like rating on the video and leave a like rating for good luck to the, to the hope of the universe that this land may actually become available. And you never know, we may end up bagging it. So without further ado, enjoy the vlog. We have managed to make some major progress in the garden. We got rid of all the roots running along the back, which are piled over here. And Tom managed to jump in the digger and landscape level it all off to make it look beautiful. Which leaves us now with this massive pile of roots and rubble that needs removing off site. Now the plan was to wheelbarrow it out to the front onto a skip and remove it. But you can imagine with all the roots over there, that is going to be a hell of a lot of journeys. To the point that we're going to rent a power barrel. So basically a wheelbarrow on steroids with a little engine and I can whiz it around the garden and do the job quicker. But that would have meant you would have seen this. Or you would have seen what I was trying to show you then. As an example, if it wasn't for my trusty, just beautiful camera stand. Right, you know what? No, enough is enough. I am sick of using spades, tr posts, tree stumps, rocks, everything to mount this to things to get an angle for you guys. Like, I don't think you guys understand how much I struggle to set up shots, getting camera angles for you guys using this tiny little mount. It is great for gripping things. I want to get a shot of me going in the house. I can grip on to the handle using this gorilla little jobby mount and we're sorted. But when I'm in the garden and I'm trying to film something at a higher up angle, I literally have to go to any object that's higher up and then mount one of these things to it to then get the angle. Now it does the job but as you've seen, nine times out of 10, it fails and it falls. So to my lovely bird stand that's been with us since day one and my trusty monopod, you're great, but you're great. 
but you're being replaced. So let's see if we've got all the attachments we need to make the ultimate camera stand. And with the power of the draw of random shit that nearly every single person in the world has in their own house, I have managed to go through it and build this awesome contraption, which included a iPhone jobby mount with a GoPro camera stand, which allows me to mount it on top of this huge tripod, which will allow us to get all the angles in the garden next door. Because right now, when I put down this little jobby gorilla mount thing down, like like it's always from down low up and it just looks terrible. But when we put it into this, look how much better that angle is. We've got the lighting, which is better. The height's better because it doesn't make you feel like you're an ant looking up or anything like that. And it does the job we need. So let's go ahead, take it into the garden and test run what it can do. So what you would have seen me done if I was only using the power barrel or a wheelbarrow would have been this a hundred times over. Ta-da! And that's what I would have to do a hundred times over. So let's make this an interesting one. Uh, Ryan, edit that to be on the screen a hundred times at once. In three, two, one, go. Ta-da! And that's what I would have to do a hundred times over. So now that we've blown up Orion's computer, explosions, um, we'll be rocking and rolling with what actually is going on. So rather than me doing the wheelbarrow run that you've seen me do, like a hundred times there and back getting rid of everything, what we're going to do is actually remove all of this land section here, flatten it out and be able to fit a tractor to go round the side of the property, which will be able to go in, get rid of all the stuff and take it out. And more importantly, that will allow us to set up for getting the dirt that we need to plant the new trees along the back end. So it's gonna be a big old jobby, but I tell you something, it is indeed gonna open us up to get access to the back of the property. Now off the get go, there's actually no downsides to doing this whatsoever. There's a mandrain down there, which we'll be staying way away from. It goes really deep, so we won't be messing with that. Removing this wall, removing that, not a problem. The only thing was, is that where you are right now is where we were gonna build the frame for a zip wire. Now we could still build the frame there, but if we're gonna be using this for access to get around the back of the property, it's probably gonna to have to move. And again, not the end of the world. It was gonna go there. We'll probably just set it up here instead and zip wire down to that bottom tree. So to all the people who keep commenting, Tom, what's happening with the zip wire? Where's the zip wire? You promised us a zip wire. Well, I've actually got it. <sighs> all right. So, with the power of not a fork, it's definitely a knife this time around, I always got that wrong. Uh, yeah, I got the zip wire. So, I ordered, I think like a 40 meter or 45 meter zip wire. I opened it up, a big shout out to the guys from zipwireshop.com. Now, I'm not saying this because it's a brand deal, but because when I got on the phone with them and told them like, hey, I'm a YouTuber and I'm making this stupid zip wire setup in my garden, um, am I coming to the right place? They were so damn helpful. Like they did actually say like, hey, do you wanna like, give us a shout out on your video and we'll give you some discount. And I was like, that'd be amazing. Forgot to take him up on that offer and instead I just went and bought the zip wire because I was too excited. But because the guy was so helpful on the phone, the actual owner of the place, I just wanted to give him a shout out anyway. So to the fellow who owns this place, thank you because you point me in the right direction for everything. We've got all the parts that we need. We've got the 40 meter steel zip wire, which look at that, looks absolutely mental. We've got the handlebar so we can go zip it on down by just holding onto it and then Inside this box, we've got the seat, so it's accessible for everyone to ride it and have some fun on. I think this should be pretty cool if you like get like a you know jackass style paintball shoot, so you can fire away at people whilst they're zipping on down it. That'd be amazing. Like get TGF involved or something like that. That'd be sick. But we've got everything we need except my bald cousin Sean. Now, the reason why we need this guy right here is because he is a joiner and he's gonna be the one installing the foundations into the ground to make sure that this thing is actually safe because I'm not trying to go killing people. Like I've got like a professional zip wire, like this is the top of the range stuff you can buy and it might not look like it, but he's the top of the range guy to get it installed. So Sean, if you're watching this, you ball bastard, uh, gonna need you to come around and install it. I will say, uh, I'm sorry for moving where the foundations were gonna go, but Wicker cells, we just, we conquer, we get past these things. I'm sorry, come round. You know what, whilst we're waiting for him, let's go on an adventure. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, today is not usually where I would start my day. I am actually out in Wales at my friend's farm, because I'm here to just check out 
his tools of the trade. But obviously whilst I'm here, I've got to have a go with a trampoline. It's just got to be done. Even though in my family, um, trampolines are a bit taboo, seeing as though my sister broke her back and she's got metal rods in it because of it. So uh, yeah, let's get off this thing real quick. Look at this on his farm. He's got little kittens that he's growing up to catch the mice in the barns. Hello you. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> So unbelievably cute, but yeah, what an absolute cracking name. Look at this view in Wales, man. It is absolutely banging. My mate's farm goes all the way down over to like the very end there where there's a massive pond and he has got all the tools of destruction to do whatever he wants with. Here's me with a little digger in my house. He's got an industrial size one. And take a look at his truck. That right there is a bit of summit summit. And if you don't think that's big, by the way, take a look at the size of this thing. That's when you know you've got land, when you need something that big. Oh yeah, and by the way, let's not even mention that this thing, look at, look at that. He just casually has one of them sat laying around. I don't know, but I think I might have to make him an offer he can't refuse to sell me this land. Because imagine if we could just turn up here, we have a farm building with quad bikes and dirt bikes and we can just rip it all around and we're disturbing absolutely no one. It's the dream. It's even got a bloody pond down it. It, it. It's honestly so beautiful and more so, the location and the view is just incredible. All the mountain range in the background. This is what it's about. Now, if you've got a farm, you know you need one of these to just get touring around in and having some fun. Look at it. It's got a little one of these and another one. It's got an actual John Deere gator. Let's go. And then something that kind of caught me off guard is uh, I heard some rustling behind me and I'm turning around and look what he's got in here. If you don't like rats or mice, be warned to look away now. Because uh, this cat is about to have an absolute feast and fiesta when it, when it realises what's behind it. Might just look like a bunch of wires and stuff like that and tubes and stuff. Yeah, take a look inside. Oh my lord, what on earth is this? Look at the size of these guys. And then look how small these ones are. Hello, hello little mousey. Hello, little mousey. This cat over here is like, how can I work out how to get inside there and eat all of them? And if you're wondering what they're for and for like context, yeah, they're for a snake. <sighs> to be able to do whatever the fuck I want. Look at all this land, oh my gosh. This is brilliant. This is so, so brilliant. I love it, I love it. All right, how long before I can get it stuck? <laughs> right, I tell you what, let's put it into, let's put it into four wheel drive. Here we go. That's more like, oh my, bloody hell. Yeah. Okay, this is a bit more like it though. We'll survive. I'm sure of it. Oh, yeah, boy. Whoa! I just got out to uh, set up my shot for filming, and look at this—I've got a little baby frog. Hello, little guy. Hello, little. Hello, little guy. Oh, look at him! He's so cute. It's okay, Mr. Froggy. It's okay. This is like spring watch with Tom. This is amazing. Do you want to know something else that's cool about this land? If we open up this gate and go through, there's a big secret pond to check out. Look at this. Ah, oh, the ultimate fun having location. Oh, we need to buy this land off him immediately. Look at the size of that rock. Now imagine we had a zip line over that. Oh yeah, look at it. Just imagine having all this space to do whatever you want from like the luxury of your house. I think rather than waiting to find the perfect land, I think I just need to get some land and just do it. Hey, waste no time, get shit done. We've got to buy some land and just have fun with it. Don't mind me, just ghost riding the whip. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, I hope I can get it Christmas right now. <laughs> I'm severely hoping there is no holes in this field because if there is, I think I might be buggered. Whoa, 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 why is this a big gap? I don't know, we're going. We're going through. 
We're going through to the under, to the far out reaches of this land. He's in his full element right now. Ooh, I've got to also say, I absolutely love these doors. Look, you can just open them up whilst you're cruising around. It's just, it's just, it's just absolutely lovely. And just like that, our fun day of adventure in the field on the Kobota. It's not a case of wanting one, it's a case of needing one. I tell you something, it's not a bad lineup, that is it. <laughs> that is sick. I can't believe we've got the two nice cars and we're stuck in a mini. Exactly. exactly. We literally can't What's drive the car that? to where we need to go it's because sweet. it's too steep in the bumps oh. and stuff like that. So we're taking his mini. Oh, yes. Look at this bad boy. We've got the carbon. Oh, it's not even. <laughs> I was going to say carbon. Got a carbon fibre plastic, bro. Oh, it is a nice day to be along the seaside. Check this out. I believe there's a boat where we're going to be getting on. Have a bit of that if you don't mind. Oh, we're stepping it up now. Look at this. We're going out on the boat, so we're gonna go to sea. Boom, 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 new, 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 new. Check the weight we're going in today. This is awesome. But look at this. We're going for a bit of a sail on the boat, boys. We could probably do some fishing since we've got some rods, but yes, that would go out to sea and see what we can see. <laughs> Delta. I knew I couldn't just sit inside the boat. I had to get on the front of the boat. Look at that, we're pirates. We're gonna, we're gonna board you and take your fish. Totally not death gripping my phone in case I drop it. What a perfect way to spend a day. Running around on a farm and chilling on a boat. Beautiful. I actually caught a fish at sea. It might not be the biggest, but I freaking caught one. <laughs> I won't let anyone say anything. Size doesn't matter. I caught a fish at sea. Mm. Just like that, back outside Carnarvon Castle. And all I'm saying is that boat was lovely that I just went on. But next time, I'm gonna have to find out who owns this boat. Who on that bad boy? That said, I'm probably more adequate to sail that dinghy right there. Which to be honest, would probably be more fun because I really want to go and do a day where I get a dinghy, put a tent in it and everything like that, and just scoot around the coast of England and just pull up, to, like camp on a beach for the night and then carry on going and live by the sea. If you guys want to see that adventure of me, a dinghy, getting about and surviving, leave a like, Crane, and I might consider doing it for a week. But hey, I'm not knocking my outing on the Cheetah Marine Catamaran. You're a beast. You just can't write it. As I'm back from my adventure in Wales, Tom. Tom, yeah, Tom. I almost didn't go through the drive through because my car wouldn't fit through it because it was pretty tight and I managed to do it luckily without curbing. Can I see it? The yeah. arm. Look at that. That's my motto on someone else's skin. That is incredible. Thank Crazy. you so much for no doing worries. that. Should we get a photo? Thank you for the is that Captain America? Who did all this artwork? Who was shouting out? Uh, Jam from Rogue Gallery. Really? Yeah. Wow, let's see that again. That is so incredible. Oh, hello, dears. Thanks for watching my vlog. I hope you did enjoy it. I know it was a very long winded vlog because it's like a story time with Tom, uh, but it's just, it's so hard to like rush a story that has meant so much to me over the course of the three years of it, like panning out and, you know, just happening. So if you guys do enjoy this sort of thing, I do appreciate like the positive feedback on the vlog. If you leave a like, Ray, and all your comments about it down below. If it's not your cup of tea, I'm sorry. I know it's like different for the format of how we usually do the vlog, but alas, it is what it is. Now, I will be ending the vlog here, guys. So leave a like, rate, and subscribe, and ding on that notification bell. We're on the road to 3 million subscribers here on the channel. Absolutely killing it, you guys. I nearly a quarter of a million views of vlog. <laughs> Mind blowing. But I just want to give you guys an open invitation. I have got a brand new channel, Syndicate Reacts, where basically you guys submit your uh, like comments of ideas of like, Tom, I want you to watch this video and react to it. Give your thoughts, your two cents of the behind the scenes backstories behind things. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And we've launched it, huzzah. It is officially partnered on the YouTubes and we're on 30,000 subscribers. So if you guys are interested in seeing like some more like 
long form talking content from me, then make sure you go and subscribe to the new channel. I'll put the link down below. And you never know, you could be one of the first couple of thousand people subscribed to the channel. So yeah, open invitation to your faces. I hope you enjoy the videos on there. And alas, thanks for watching this vlog. So until next time, much love to your faces. Adios.